Welcome, this is the all new BMW 8 Series Coupe here on Autogefuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. Today the full driving review, racetrack, countryside, everything you want possibly with this vehicle for have a good driving experience for you and me together. Also exterior, different colors, different trims and of course the interior. All about this vehicle you need to know if you want to buy it or if you're just a fan. In full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. We are here for you at sunrise with the color sunset orange. Really screaming out color for sure. We will show you different colors later on. This one also equipped with a shadow line here with a matte gray frame around the huge BMW double kidney. When it's also in black, it almost looks like it would be one double kidney area. Those headlamps are really flat. Optional, the laser light, which is also equipped right here. And then you can see those blue accentuations and a very strong hood design line on both sides. Also with a carbon fiber package, we can see it in the front, and also later on on the roof. What do you think as a first impression? Is 84 or 15 foot 9 is the total length here of the 8 series coupe. If you compare it to a 6 series GT, which is you know rather you know a transport vehicle, so to say, this one here rather in the sports luxury direction, this one here is 25 centimeters shorter. However, later on, there will also be a grand coupe for the 8 series, which will then again feature four doors and be longer again. They want to put the 8 Series really in the top luxury segment, but make it a little bit sportier than, for example, the S-Class Coupe. There will also be a convertible of the 8 Series. So later on you will have a setup then with 8 Series Coupe here, 8 Series Grand Coupe, 8 Series Convertible, and all three versions will also later come as an M version for the top sports variant. But already this one is set on a rather sporty tone. 19 inch rims is standard, 20 inch we see here, those ones are optional. Shadow line with black accentuations, also around the frames here. Then carbon fiber covers for the side mirrors, also on the roof. You can see this strong coupe line with very strong shoulders. Doesn't look great how the sunlight here goes on those raindrops looks really amazing. I love to have those shootings then after it has rained, not while it is raining actually. And all-wheel drive is standard to get all the traction to the ground, also a rear differential lock. And also for the petrol engine you can get an anti-tilt control. That The tilting in the side when you go to the corners very fast is even being reduced, not available for the diesel. Well, We'll soon find out more about how this car drives. Let's finish up the exterior. All 8 Series model, by the way, come standard with the M adaptive suspension. And here in the rear, you can see it's very sculptural. I think it's very well done here also at the rear that this kind of integrated wing is forming. The carbon package also has this additional carbon wing. I could also live without that. Then the horizontally torn tail lamps. Right there, also with an interesting light signature. X-Drive also signaling that this one is all-wheel drive all the way. The carbon fiber package also adds this massive diffuser in carbon fiber style. And then those very outer tips, those ones are just for beauty. The real exhaust on the inside and from those one, two, three, four, four exhaust pipes, the outer ones each, they have an extra exhaust valve. You can even see from the outside to give you a more wobbling sound then. Blah, 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 blah.
And to show you a different color, this one is called Carbon Black Metallic. It has a dark blue nuance, really interesting, where I can see also different light shades on it. And I also like the brighter blue color we had at the static review at the Paris Motor Show. Or maybe also plain black then, maybe with the carbon fiber package. So some color choice we can already show you here. Of course, there will be some more available. Let's take a look under the hood and I can only stress again, release it twice from the inside and then there's no separate opening mechanism here. You can just lift it up together with hydraulic struts, very easy. First short info about the diesel, a 3 liter R6 called 840D and this one then comes with 320 horsepower and acceleration 4.9 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. However, this one here, probably the most important engine for this vehicle, 4.4 liter V8. 530 horsepower, 750 newton meters of torque and 3.7 seconds acceleration to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. Again with all-wheel drive, of course always, to get all the traction to the ground. Rear wheel bias, but the more you push it, the more power is also transferred to the front wheels. Now moving to the interior, well, you can also get this super fancy computer key. You can see the range there, you can um, unlock it also there, but or see if it's locked actually when you're also a little bit more far away. But I would think I would go for an easier key because this is also like always very bulky if you carry it around, for example. Well, let's open the door, of course, frameless windows as we know from the coupe. And here we can see everything wrapped tightly from the design, also soft materials being used in this design, Hofmeister Knick from old Coupe languages as well. Well, those could be galvanized, right? The window levers when you pay so much money for a vehicle. Hmm. Then, well, at the instant of the doors, you don't have too much room to put anything. And this goes throughout the car. It's not really spacious at all. Just on the front seats. And here we go. Only animal skin surfaces available for the seats. So they do not offer any sustainable alternatives there. But the seats themselves, you can already see, they're supposed to be quite comfortable. We'll soon test them, of course, for you. Then the steering wheel is also an M steering wheel here with the logo at the lower part have the cruise control on the left side and for example voice command and volume on the right side. You can also get different decal elements. This one a more subtle one here with aluminum cover. You'll also get a standard head-up display. I can already see it from here. We'll soon take a look at those digital gauges, head-up display and also at the infotainment system. Let's get inside. Of course, the car sits quite low, but it's easy to get inside as the doors are very long. However, if you're in a narrow, narrow parking slot maybe, if you can really open the doors and hmm. But then you can, um, for example, lower the windows first. That's easier to get out then. So, and sitting here, yeah, I mean, you're limited, by, especially by the A-pillar. By the way, all covered in microfiber. That's really cool. But the seating position is very comfortable also for taller people. I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1. However, if I have the seat in the lowest position, well... I can put my hand over my head like this, but that's it then, basically. Of course, the car is so flat design-wise. And also you have the sporty setup that the middle console is really large, so you're really sporty car-like caged in, although it's a very big car. But it is actually true that the design scheme from the exterior is carried out over to the interior, so you really feel like you would be sitting in a sports car, although from size-wise, it's of course already a quite large car. Interior overview, you have always the digital screen, 12.3 inch gauges left digital, 10.25 inch, here the infotainment system on the right, and you can see, wow, <laughs> the red car is all, uh, sorry, sunset orange car is also matched right there, so depending on the, oh yeah, if I'm using gestures, the car is also 
realizing I'm doing that. So um, yeah, well, this gesture is also available as a favorite gesture, for example. So I like that they also have the red color here, but not in the digital gauges. Then you also have still a separate climate unit here. You can control it while driving very easily. I like that. However, I like more turning knobs. But at least I have one still with the volume, also with a metal knurling around. In the lower area, this is checkered structure, feels metal alike. You can put them open, inductive charging for the smartphone in the lower part, adaptive cup holders and one normal USB supply there in the front. Heated steering wheel option is right there in the lower area, separate button. And the digital instruments are here. So you can, for example, see that the driver, the co-driver door is open and you also have some options for example see the consumption right there and then you'll see speed as well as the rpms rpms go counterclockwise as we can see right here wow that looks quite cool oh there it is there is the red car actually so it's obviously just gray in the first screen and not in the second one and also you can see now the gps in the middle part and here we can there it is. So obviously it's a grayscale car when you have the welcome screen, but as soon as you turn on the car, then you can see your personal color. It's always hard to catch the head-up display on the camera. There it is. It's not flickering in real life, but if I would put the camera to non-flickering, then you, it would be actually quite dark. So you can see the speed, the allowed speed, and also some GPS information if you have activated a route. The infotainment system also has some sport displays. You can see you can also use it with touch, so the G meter, and it does leave fingerprints, but you can also use it with the central controlling knob in the lower part. The energy flow, for example, will show us um, some distribution there. We'll check it out when we drive the vehicle. And in journey data, by the way, if you want to reset your personal consumption, you really have to do it here now because it won't completely work. Here, reset individual then it's reset it. It will not work with the BC button in the digital instruments anymore as you are used to it. So then this is the home screen. You can also click on the GPS map. We are close to Zinter again, one of my favorite areas to review cars. Portugal, good responsiveness and also very clear and crystal display. Phone connect either via Bluetooth right here or also with the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto not offered yet, but they told me now that they are addressing this issue now. And the CarPlay is wireless. The camera system has a separate button. There we are with the rear wheel camera. Oh, there's a vehicle approaching. <laughs> it's good to see the, the wide angle then. It's also activated when you put in the rear or the reverse gear. Then it's split also. Here you can see the, oh, this is the thing about the gesture control. I just show something, but I mean, maybe it's a car review problem. Oh, that was the Z8 driving. See here also when I turn the steering wheel, the camera is moving alongside. That's also a very cool feature that enables you to see everything better. And then when you put in the front gear again, then you have the front camera and it's also twisting. That's really cool feature. So one of the best camera systems out there, I think. And in this drone view, you can also switch and have this 3D, it's not exactly like what was Audi offering there, but it's switching then here according to those cameras. Also pretty fancy that you can, for example, protect your alloys. This lower middle console, this crystal gear shifting Leo, we already know from the X5 or the X7, together with metal knurling twisting knob right there. The favorite keys are here for accessing the map for example then on the left side camera system button esc off and the different driving modes here to get more throttle input steering wheel response and also change the rear wheel drive maybe give it a little bit more rear wheel drive traction than on the front and you can also have the adaptive mode to play with it around and the auto hold or the electric handbrake middle armrest opens in a split way even more storage room, actually quite decent, and one USB-C port then here, as well as 12 volt power supply. One of my favorite features is the frameless mirror. Gives some elegance and also good look to the rear. Well, mirror-wise, of course, the <laughs> rear view is always limited by this Copé style, but then you have the camera system. As for the rear compartment, you uh, get this latch here, the back side of the seat then push it forward then it automatically slides forward 
Here we go. I mean, yeah, that's a good feature that this is happening that way. But then again, if I have the driver seat that I would be driving, you can see here on the far part. I mean, wow. And there's noth nothing leg room left. By the way, Isofix at the outset of the seats each on the rear, so it works for child seats. And now Thomas on the rear seat is incoming because I will try it no matter what. To get in, it's already quite complicated. In, in German, you would say reinschälen. It's like peeling in. <laughs> And I cannot put my feet under the seat really. And then when I do it like this, it goes back and squeezes me a little bit. Then it goes forward again. Um, yeah, that really doesn't work at all. So it's one of the worst packages of a car ever, considering the length. Also, headroom wise, um, it doesn't really fit at all. I can just touch this wonderful microfiber ceiling. <laughs> That's the only advantage. And you can see if I would be sitting here like this. I mean, maybe like a couple of minutes I would sustain that. But then even in the front, you can see it would hardly be possible that someone still would sit in the front, even on the co-driver side. Holger wanted us to film this one. Uh. <laughs> yeah, about that. Well, I guess no one really expects this car to be a luggage carrier electric tailgate here but let's just check out those 420 liters of boot space well the width here is actually quite okay then but of course you have this very complicated loading sill and in length it's really okay but of course you're pretty much limited with your luggage let me just put the cabin trolley in here so i can show you like this and when i push it through it could even fit maybe two next to each other longitudinal wise so again in length it's really okay in height you can stuff your airport luggage in that that's actually no problem also weekend will also just work just bulky items will not work at all then we can also release the back seats right there but then you have to go around and have to push the front seat forward i've already done that and then you can also flip those here we go. <laughs> hey guys, top teller by the way on the back of the seats here. Again, this is limited in the height, but if you want to put longer things here rolling through, this is also at least somewhat possible. And I just found out something very interesting. So, you know, when I did them one by one, I had to go around and flip them. But now, watch that. If I actually release them at once and, you know, with quite some strength, Ta-da! Then they actually also flip from here. So release them both at once and, you know, with diligence, then you don't have to go around to flip them manually. Interesting finding here. What about the child safety test? Well, with those very small tailgates, it's usually easier to get the right torque done. Yeah, I think that's still quite okay. It's not too heavy, not too easy, but I think still a good compromise. There we go. <laughs> so here we are guys on the secret Estoril, close to Lisbon and with the 8 series coupe we'll try the racetrack capabilities. By the way the instructor in the front here in the other 8 series coupe this is Philip Eng is DTM works driver for BMW so I won't be able to catch him really when he's applying the throttle but he'll guide me guide me the way through the track here I already know it we've been here also for example with the M5 you can check out that review as well so we'll take it slowly in the first round a little bit and then increase the speed the all-wheel drive is helping me to keep the traction. Now we're also going high speed, 170 kilometers an hour. And you hear that the car also remains relatively silent as for the wind noise features. Also interesting to see the braking lights. They're flashing when he's really hammering the brakes. That's of course a warning symbol then, especially when you're doing some street driving. And 
the car is driving very harmoniously, I would say. Also due to this rear axle steering, which we have, we have here in the petrol engine. So the transition area between the rear axle steering across and steering parallel is about 70, 80 kilometers now, so exactly here. So now in the chicane right there, in the S chicane, just tires screaming a little bit. I'm using the across steering feature of the rear axle steering and when I'm now driving faster, it's the parallel steering of the rear axle to give some more stability. I'm really happy with the steering, so it gives me a good feeling. Those tires on those race track cars, by the way, are a little bit blown out already, so you get some sliding to the sides. Now we're having a throttle. That's 200 kilometers or 125 miles per hour. And, well, excellent wind noise features, so I don't have to raise my voice at all for that. You just heard some, you know, small stones and sand crawling up. That's always on those racetracks. Now we're picking up the pace just a little bit. So we already heard the tire scream, and that's of course, I mean, it's a heavy car. And due to the weight, when you push it in the corners, see it here. So this car doesn't allow a too high entry speed into the corners. That would be different to a smaller sports car. And of course, you know, we have to always think about, uh, there were some other groups already here who also drove those tires. And it's still a little bit slick here. It has rained in the morning, so it's not super dry yet. And this is also reducing the traction we have here, especially by braking. Not excessively by accelerating, that's already pretty good here. But you know, always hear those tires squeaking then on camera for sure. The all-wheel drive is giving me good acceleration out of the corners. So when I was here with the M5 in the rear-wheel drive only mode, it was actually quite dangerous in comparison, especially here in this corner here. I had one situation where I was really sliding out unpurposely in the M5, because when you have just the power on the rear wheels, that's definitely a problem if you have too much power. But here, when I'm accelerating out, now for example here, I'm also being pulled out of the corner a little bit, and therefore I can also apply a little bit more throttle when I'm accelerating out. Usually it's like that, you know, you know, surge a braking point, then you hold your speed steady in the corner. It doesn't make sense to apply so much throttle in the corner, then you just get carried out to the outside, and then when you get the out of the corner, then hard on the gas again. That's 225 kilometers an hour that was, so over 125 miles, and the car feels so stable, so calm, effortless, especially when going straight due to this long wheelbase for sure. So in the sport mode, I'm you know, I, I can have some control over, over the vehicle still. That's still rather smooth to ride. Of course, the acceleration is really giving me a push for sure. So this the abundance of power is not always that good. So yes, you can tell your friends, oh, I have 530 horsepower, but this car would also easily work with 100 horsepower less, I can tell you. And sometimes it's not always good to have the most horsepower, I'm also a fan of to giving cars the right horsepower, the, you know, the, for the right handling. So sometimes it's, um, sometimes less is more, I think. Maybe, you know, when going straight and having all-wheel drive, then you can get, get the power to the ground. But here in the corners, for example, more horsepower doesn't use me anything. And since we have the all-wheel drive, it's also not that when you hit the throttle that you're braking out of the rear immediately, so also more power is transported than to the front wheels, definitely very helpful. So since it's a, well, you know, the, the developer of this vehicle, the, uh, the model line boss said it, it would be a gentleman's race car, and I think, you know, it's, it's a marketing slogan for sure, but I think you can say that somehow 
maybe also what you see on camera here because you have a race car sound. You're also quite fast on the track. It is brutal from the acceleration, but again, it's still quite comf comfortable to, to drive in this vehicle. And that's maybe what this, this combination is about. Now here we can in straight. Now we're going to Sport Plus mode, see how the difference there is. Maybe you heard that already here on the straight, that the gear was turned up even higher. Also sound-wise, this is a difference then. The shifting comes later up even and earlier down. And also the ESC changes just a little bit. You can also draw back the ESC with the traction mode. That's possible with Sport ESC and you can turn it off completely, but that wouldn't give you more speed. It was just more control maybe if you're a professional race driver and we really want to spin the car around. Now in the Sport Plus mode, Let's see how that applies to the throttle. Yeah, so the rear comes around just a little bit more. The car feels a little bit more loose, so to say. Just on this small straight, we almost reached 200 kilometers. So this I'm saying a little bit more inside here in the corner. This corner here again is really treacherous, I can tell you. Especially because it becomes more narrow at the outside part. I think my favorite trick is this chicane here. It really brings out the agility of the vehicle. And again, it's surprising that considering the length and the size, it's still quite agile. But if you hear the tires squeaking, you also hear that physics are in place and that a smaller sports car would surely perform better. Here especially, yeah. but for sure, still fun to drive the car around. Although it is actually more fun to drive smaller sports cars on the race track because less G forces are applied. You know, talking of that, what we can do is also give some vehicle information, sport gauges. Let's check the g-forces and I mean that's also speaks from uh, someone maybe is commenting now time code and then Thomas driving 180 kilometers on the straightaway and picking the g-force meter so the car made me actually that calm and comfortable in the race track that this was possible so let's see in the front g-force meter now all the way to the left it's quite fun though, but I mean, maybe for a co-driver to look at it, but I think as a driver you have to concentrate on the road. That's probably the better idea. So what do you think here about the 8 series on the racetrack? Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the street driving part, countryside route here with the 8 Series Coupe. And this one is also equipped with the rear axle steering, so this reduces the turning circle, especially when parking in and out. Comfort mode also makes the steering light. And I was expecting the car to feel a little bit heavier and bulky, as it's a really big grown-up sports car. However, this rear axle steering especially makes it feel a little bit smaller and easier to control. That's really helpful. You do have the all-wheel drive, but the, still the car remains with a big rear-wheel bias. So when it's a little bit wet, for example, you're just in the comfort mode and push the throttle a little bit more and you already have the rear wheel spinning because you have so much power. It is quite comfortable to drive, especially if you are in those comfort modes and also not that loud. So that would be, you know, for a longer cruise, for example, that's still suitable. 
However, I must say that considering the size of the vehicle, I mean, I, I think we, you could expect a little bit more comfort if a car is so much bigger. And uh, just yesterday I've driven the BMW Z4 and I wouldn't say that this car here gives me much more comfort now. So um, the Z4 is like half the length or something, <laughs> you know, figuratively speaking. So here again, some reactions. There's the next Z4 coming, and you also need good reactions here on those routes. And let's go to the sport mode directly, and hear more of the exhaust. And I'll directly switch to the sport plus mode, because in the sport plus mode, then, if I let go of the throttle, uh, not necessarily when, you, when I go uphill, but when I go down over here, then you also hear the exhaust valve plopping. You have more throttle input then, direct response and the acceleration is really brutal. So I'm getting pushed from the rear and also a little bit pulled from the front. Exhausted of course louder now. The steering, this integral active steering is also included with this vehicle. Now <laughs> you maybe heard the exhaust valve. You also hear when you have some dust on the road or something, you hear it pretty much on the wheel wheel arches, a little bit like with the Porsche 911. You know, when I get on the throttle and let it go. Uh, shifting back, wow, great coastal view. So, really a very direct response then, also through the throttle. I do really have to be careful with a vehicle, especially if you are in Sport Plus mode. It's usually not necessarily thought that you use it while city driving, then you rather stay in the comfort mode because there's so much power. Also look at the angle of the corner and how I turn the steering wheel then. The adaptive M, M suspension also does a good job for the everyday driving. This is still fine. So also multi-purpose, so to say. They do not use air suspension here, but it's also not really needed. The BMW suspensions are really well thought out. So now, just turn around here that we can go all this nice scenic route back again. Also with the camera systems helping me pretty much because when I just look at the rear, I can hardly see anything, you know, um, especially you cannot look just, you know, at the maybe cars behind you or something. So the camera system is really needed for this vehicle if you want to see anything in the rear. The design on the exterior, of course, pretty much limiting what you can actually see. I'm watching at the head-up display all the time now, also to check my speed. That's really helpful because everything else is really buried in there. This energy flow meter, by the way, is, uh, yeah, I mean, switching all the time, for example, uh, it's charging the small car internal battery when I'm going off the throttle. That is this gauge showing there and when I accelerate, basically shows me that the combustion engine is active. So it's not a real mild hybrid or something, just the normal battery is being charged. BMW is doing that for you know a lot of years now to save some fuel, but again, the fuel consumption of this vehicle will be really very, very high. Just too hard to find an exact figure here for you when, of course, we are doing only those agile testing. It's better when to get a better fuel economy figure when you have a you know longer motorway run or something. Very big brakes are being applied. You can still remain in control. You have to be careful when the road is still a little bit wet. It's surely a lot of fun to drive the car, and again, I think the main finding is that it feels a little bit smaller than I would have actually expected. But it's still a big, you know, a, a big car. You know, you have to bear that in mind. And you feel also in the corners, you're getting pushed to the outside of the corners just by the weight. So I would consider this car then more, you know, a really. A, a Grand Tourer that's also being used for show off in the city. Wow, that was a loud boom from the exhaust now. It is, of course, still fun to drive the corners, 
not as fun as with a smaller sports car. That's for sure, you have to bear that in mind. So always a question then what do you want? More prestige, more, um, I, I said in the, in the initial um, in preview also, like a representative sports car, that is not a racing sports car, a representative sports car, even though you can go with it on racetrack and it does work on the racetrack for sure. So enjoy some more corners here with me. This is still an area where the car feels very well, those countryside routes. But again, surely also when just stopping in front of the ice cream parlor. By the way, when we're at higher speeds, this um, rear axle steering goes in a parallel direction. So to give you some more stability, and when you're at lower speeds, goes in the opposite direction than in the than the front wheels to give you then you know more flexibility especially when driving slowly. And now to our conclusion for today with the BMW 8 series coupe. Well, the sense of this vehicle is rather to be a representative sports car, that's what I say, because the design is really very beautiful, that's what I think. So those very sleek lines, front hood, very long, and then those massive shoulders. This is definitely a piece of automotive design, of automotive art, I would say. On the interior, we also find a good build quality and it's actually easy to use it on the interior. But then again, you have really little room. Driving-wise, really the rear axle steering is helping a lot because you can turn around the car easier and this is also something that speaks for the petrol engine because then you can actually pick the rear axle steering. The diesel would be better if you are a long-term commuter. We could not really score on average consumption here today, which would be reliable. We have to do it at a later stage, at a longer test for sure, but the petrol engine will consume a lot of fuel surely more than the official state. However, the new WLTP cycles for the consumption figures are more realistic than the old ones, that's for sure. On the racetrack, the car showed also that it is fun to drive even on the racetrack, although it's such an expensive and big car. However, the weight also limits that, just physics playing a role there, you feel that you're getting pushed outside in the corners, then also a, <laughs> a smaller race car or something like that, a scooter maybe. It's a little bit more fun on the race track when you have less weight and more flexibility to control the car. And that brings me back to the initial statement that it's more a gentleman race car, uh, as BMW says, or as I say, a representative sports car. Price-wise, the diesel will start at 100,000 euros in Germany. This one here, the petrol engine, 126,000. And if you spec it with some more extras and stuff, as we have it here today, the car as it stands here, 145,000. Then, of course, you have to start thinking, do you have enough money to be that representative? Or would you rather go then for a smaller sports car? Well, those are my two cents here for today, or my 145,000 cents or euros. What are yours? Give me your opinion there and also join us next time at our next Auto Fuel episode. Thank you so much for watching.